Okay, so I prepared uh, a short introduction of myself, of what uh, what I studied and my professional career, and then I prepared also a presentation of the Signal project. So I, I'm not sure if I will have the time to present everything, but just I will take a look to the to the clock. Okay, so uh, we finish at at four p.m. as uh, as scheduled. Okay, so I work here at the University of Valencia. I have prepared here a brief introduction of my studies because I've been in different places. So I study Universidad Politécnica de Valencia. It's not, it's not this university, it's another one. Then I went to Vienna University of Technology. I stayed there three years. Then I came back to the Universidad Politécnica de Valencia. Then I stayed uh, half a year at the University of Nottingham in the UK, half a year at the Nanyang um, Technological University of Singapore, and then I came back to the Polytechnic University of Valencia. Okay, that is regarding my um, studies. I will go uh, one by one. Okay. So, what I studied in in University of, uh, Polytechnic University of Valencia is topography. It's a degree of three years, and after these three years, you can study two more years for the geodesia cartography uh, degree. So I do these three years in um, in uh, topography, and, but I specialized or I made an intensification in, in photogrammetry. So I was researching, I was doing my final year project in uh, 3D reconstruction on photo models. You can see there some pictures of my Final year project, yeah. So I got, the, I, I finished the first dipo, diploma degree with honors because I had the best academic record of uh, more than 170 students, and I got this uh, San Isidoro Prize for for that. So after that, I moved to to Vienna. Is there anybody here from Austria? No. Okay. So I moved to the Technische Universität Wien. And I went first as an Erasmus student. It was only one year at the beginning, but I liked so much um, because at that time uh, things were very different here in Spain, or at least the university where I studied, compared to, to Vienna. So, technologically speaking, there were many more resources there for students than, than in Valencia. So, despite that, I, I first went for only one year as Erasmus. I decided to apply for more scholarships and to stay there. The problem to stay there is that, uh, and to finish there my studies, is that there were not uh, relationships between the two universities at that time. So all that I studied was not going to be convalidated and things like that. So what I did when I went there with uh, my scholarships is to convalidate all my studies, such as I said, that I did in Valencia in order to be inscribed as a regular student. So I finished as a regular student my master's degree in surveying and geoinformation, and then I came back to Valencia and I convalidated one by one all my subjects to have this uh, degree here in Valencia as well. So the last year I was there at the um, Technische Universität Wien. I had a Leonardo da Vinci grant at the Institute of Photogrammetry and Remote Sensing. And I was um, like working there. It was like a kind of training. And the work that I did there at the Institute of Photography and Remote Sensing was regarding the geometric um, rectification of airborne multispectral data with uh, GPS and information from inertial sensors. So now, today, we have all this technology in our mobile devices. But back in 2000, Forget about that. So it was really difficult. And also the, the GPS and inertial sensors that are in, uh, in place, installed in place, have different accuracies, of course, as the ones that we have in our mobile phones. They work differently, and we can reach very, very good uh, accuracies. And here you can see yeah, some information of these multispectral images and different bands and the composition. Here you can see how much it is distorted. This is a distortion um, when when it's uh, when the, when the camera gets the pictures of the terrain. This is distorted, and at the end, 
I have to manage to, to put everything in order with the calibration of the, of the information. Then I finished, I finished my studies there, my master's degree, I convalidated everything, I came back to, to Valencia. And then I wanted to do the PhD, but it's not that easy to do a PhD here if you don't have a grant, because uh, you have to work and do a PhD, and I wanted to apply for a grant. So the problem was that at, uh, that at the School of Geodesy, where I studied, there were no possibilities to apply for grants for PhD, because there were not funded projects at that time. So I had to look in other places. And there was a project of augmented reality, which has a lot of things in common with photogrammetry, and GPS, and inertial navigation systems. It has a lot in common. But this was in the fine art school. But anyway, I applied for that. So, and I got the, uh, the grant, okay? So when I applied for the grant, um, the person at the fine art school called me by phone, is this an error? You are an engineer, is right? Yes, I'm an engineer. You know this is a fine art school? Yes, I know. But the project is regarding augmented reality, is that right? Yes. And I got this scholarship, okay? So, um, I was in a new environment. What makes a, an engineer inside a fine art school? Well, at the end, I was very focused in the technology, but applied to a different area of knowledge. And also, I learned how to work with people from humanities, from social sciences, different work. So, I have to say I'm really proud because of this, because this is crucial in my life. After this, what I can say now is that I am able to coordinate, to coordinate interdisciplinary projects because I am able to understand the way different areas work, how people work in different areas. So I'm very proud of, of my stay there during the four years at the, uh, at the Laboratorio de Lourdes. But during these four years, I also moved a little bit. Well, uh, first of all, uh, this is some images of the work that I was doing. I was researching, researching in augmented reality mirrors. So nowadays, one here augmented reality, and everybody knows what, what's about. But back in 2003, very few people knew about the technology. It was quite immature, and there was a lot of space for exploring and for researching. So I researched in uh, augmented reality mirrors also in urban spaces, how to mix virtual and real information, taking into account techniques related to computer vision, GPS, inertial navigation systems. So I apply everything that I learned in order to build this, this application. But then I move because the scholarships uh, allow you <coughs> to travel during the, the time you're doing the PhD, so I moved to the University of, Not of Nottingham. I stay there at the Miss Reality Laboratory. So they have a lot of research regarding Miss Reality. And I was there also doing part of, uh, of my doctoral thesis. I was there doing six months. And I researched in Miss Reality environments, also mixing like video games and uh, where it was, uh, yeah. Uh, virtual environments, I will say, virtual environments with the technologies of GPS and inertial sensors for the navigation of, of the users. And then the next year, in 2006, I also applied to, to travel abroad uh, with this scholarship, and I went to Singapore. I was at the Nanyang Technological uh, University, and I was at the Interaction and Entertainment Research Center. And in this center, they have developed a technology uh, for the uh, um, augmented reality application, which is marker-based, so it's based on uh, computer vision. And I was researching in augmented reality mirrors for the entertainment. So this was the project that I was doing while I was there. And then I finished, and I have uh, outstanding doctoral thesis award, because my thesis was like, uh, uh, quite different because was an engineer in the uh, fine art school, and it was like uh, 
quite interdisciplinary, so I got this uh, outstanding um, thesis award. And that's about my uh, studies and how they work. I've moved a little bit less during my work, so I stay, uh, when I finish the, uh, my PhD, I stay at the Polytechnic University of Valencia, then I moved to Aido, and since 2012, uh, I'm here in this, at this university. So what I did, I joined the research group in photogrammetry and laser scanning, and I was there um, very involved in projects related to cultural heritage. So I was dealing with interactive uh, applications, also uh, researching in, in augmented reality mirrors, also uh, doing 3D modeling of archaeological sites and trying to miss, you see this picture that is in the middle? You see this part is a, is a photograph, it's a picture, and this is the 3D reconstruction. So it's like trying to combine um, yeah, the, the archaeological site with uh, the reconstruction with the help of uh, other people that uh, research on how this could be, the, the, how these sites could be in the, in, in the past. No? And I, I did this reconstruction. And I also was uh, involved in projects uh, related to 3D scanning. You see there the, these stone monuments from uh, Jordania, from Jordan, and, and thermal imaging as well. And then when my contract finished and I went to, I moved to the Industrial Association of Optics Color and Imaging, it's named AIDO. It's a um, research institute, but it's not linked to a university, so it's outside the academy, but it's also a research institute. And then I was working with applications related to industry. So uh, first, I, I just put here some of, of the projects I've been I've been involved. Here uh, you see on the left you can see a, a laser. You can see, see here some glasses and you can see a laser, a line laser. And this moved and because of the moving there was a camera recording everything. It is a camera. And we could have the, the cloud of the, the cloud of the, the 3D clouds of these, uh, of these glasses. And then some, I did some calculations in order to calculate the index. So this is the, the, the space where, where the, the, the glasses stick, okay? Uh, this was one. This uh, another, uh, 3D, the obtention of 3D cloud of points by means of different technologies, by computer vision, um, with a stereoscopy, with uh, fringe patterns, so Taker, I remember this, this technique. And then also here I put uh, an image also this was a picture taken from an infrared camera, and with this image we could see some special properties. And these are some grapes as collected. And I auto automatically detected uh, things that were not grapes and classified them according to leaves and other things. Okay, and this was needed in order to calculate from the industry to calculate the quality. Of, of the harvest, of, of what it was recollected. Because if there are a lot of leaves and uh, a lot of things that are used, uh, useless, the quality is, is worse, no? something like that. So this is uh, yeah, uh, automatic uh, recognition. And then it was in the project of FP7 Siddhartha that is uh, related to cultural heritage. And the images I put here, uh, this project has many things, but we were building a, 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 um, an optical system which was a hyperspectral system based on imaging for the automatic detection of deterioration of artworks. And here I have some pigments that we reproduced in the same way as the ancient pigments. I have here some spectral curves taken from the infrared camera, uh, from the uh, multispectral system. And then I have here the results of automatic classification with support vector machines. Okay, so this is the one of the things that I did. I also did uh, some projector calibration and other things, but I continued this research afterwards uh, here, so I put this here in, in other slides. So 
uh, when I finished, well, before entering AIDO, I applied for a scholarship for doing a postdoc. And you know, from when you apply and then you get the postdoc, there's like one the year that, that goes through. So I got, when I was working in, in AIDO, I got the communication from the Ministry uh, of Spain that I had the postdoctoral grant Juan de la Sierva to come here to the Institute of Robotics and Information and Communication Technology. So I left AIDO and I came here. And I continue, uh, continue my research here. So this is the first postdoctoral grant that I have. After that, I was working in other um, projects as uh, senior researcher. And now I have a postdoctoral grant of Ramon y Pajal. So I, I'm now in my second uh, postdoctoral grant. So this is um, one of the things that I've been doing here when I, when I arrived, because this was part also of the Siddhartha project. So I was researching in the calibration of projectors, not cameras, but projectors. And I applied that uh, for cylindrical surfaces, like, uh, you don't see this image so much well, but here's a cylindrical surface here. And this is a uh, spatial augmented reality. So this is that uh, to project things on real things. So you need to calibrate the projectors very accurately. So the projection matches on the, uh, on the surfaces. So that is what I did. And I also was involved in other projects also related to augmented reality. For instance, this one is a project for um, to develop an application for the inspection of uh, prefabricated buildings. Uh, it's just like the inspector goes with a tablet and can see through the tablet the real space and also augmented with other information. And he or she can take automatic annotations just clicking and, he, and these annotations that he writes, they are stored in the virtual building that is exactly the same as the real one. So this is then everything translated into um, a system that stores all this information. Okay, so this is what I was working here. And now I'm very involved in the, uh, in the project Siddhartha that I'm going to explain you now. But just uh, I would say that uh, this is about uh, 3D representation of fabrics at the yard level. Also, there's, a, there's something regarding to, oh, there's a, a research in a spatial temporal visualization of data. And it's everything for the digital cultural heritage area. So if I have the time, I hope, yes, I think it's hard to I will talk about this project now. So where do I work? I work here, okay? But I'm involved both at the Institute of uh, Robotics and Information and Communication Technology and at the Department of uh, Informatics. So here, in the first one, I do my research, and in the second one, I do teaching. So, so I'm principal investigator now of two projects. One is called CEMAP. It's a small project, uh, but it's for the uh, a spatial temporal uh, visualization of uh, cultural heritage. So it's, it's a little bit related with Silna, but with a broader area. So Silna is only for SIG, and this involves many other things. And we are using also different technologies in, in both projects. So my teaching, um, I teach in two subjects. One is uh, graphical expression, um, where I work with my students with AutoCAD, a SketchUp for two-dimensional, uh, two three-dimensional representation of objects. And then I got this uh, data visualization where I especially work with my students with the uh, georeferency data. So data that has this geographical information, how to represent this data on a map, what is a map, and uh, what is the best representation according to the purpose. So I do other things. So I'm founder and co-editor in chief of one journal that is called Multimodal Technologies and Interaction with uh, editor in chief uh, Mark Billinghurst. Mark Billinghurst is a pioneer, pioneer in augmented reality. He's at the very top level of, of this technology. So I'm very proud that he uh, accepted my invitation because I am invited him and he said yes. So I'm really happy. And then I also am head of institutional relations at the Association Ciencia del Parlamento. So at this association, what we are trying to do is to 
uh, to open links, uh, to open avenues between science, politics, and society. And we went to the parliament in 2018 because uh, the Spanish parliament didn't have a, a scientific office. So we demanded from our politicians that when they wrote, write the, the laws, they are at least informed in science. Okay, you do that work, but be informed first in science. So we didn't have the, the, uh, this uh, office at that time. And we do have this office now because we were pushing. Okay, so we had, uh, we are being nature, made that that is the president of the parliament, also a Norwich Award. War. And yes, we were very happy. We were presenting our results also to the, to the table of the, uh, of the ministry of the, uh, in Mali. Okay, and today we are very proud to say it's very recent declaration, but that we have this office. Okay, so that's regarding my uh, trajectory, my, thank you. <laughs> and, then, and let me show you the other one. So let me ask you, how have you come from the technological side? Technological side, engineering, more or less. And from the social sciences? Okay. So I see here an interdisciplinary team. That's great. A lot of projects today need um, the different views from different areas of knowledge in order to achieve uh, better results. And that is what a signal project is about. So, so okay, why still, why now? Why we re, uh, decided to research in this? Well, a silk is not only something related to the past, it is still alive in our traditions here. For instance, you can see a fallera. Uh, Falla is the, 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 yeah, the, something that we have here in Valencia, and we still keep this, these traditions. And this is a heritage that is not very well known, but if you look to the history, it has, has impacted today so much because of that. Um, for instance, there were a lot of people working there, there were a lot of women working there, and just because uh, the seal needs, uh, uh, how do you say, worms, you, you need worms, you need trees uh, for the worms, and so, the landscape was very different also because of the silk industry that we had in the past. So there's a lot of things. And also, one thing that you maybe know is that there's a strong relationship between uh, the looms. You see, these are the cards of the looms. You see, these are the horns. These are zeros and ones. They are the pioneers of the uh, first computers we have. So this is very related, this technology is very related to computers also. It's not only, of course, we, everybody knows about the Silk Road, but it's not only the Silk Road. There are only, after the Silk Road appeared, there were only a lot of connections between European cities. And this is something that people uh, don't know about that. And we have, because of that, um, there is a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of textiles, a lot of um, artifacts that remain in different institutions, but they are unconnected. So different institutions have their collections, digital collections, and they are unconnected. And because this is a not very well-known heritage, it's also in danger of disappearing. So we try in this project to rescue this heritage. Okay, I will try to go a little bit uh, uh, quicker, because if not, okay, so we say European history is moving in silk. And who are we? We are three universities, research centers, two uh, small enterprises, and one cultural, uh, cultural institute, with, which is Instituto Cervantes. And we are from different countries. 
here are some pictures of the people working before the pandemic. <laughs> it seems you are see them, but it's, uh, yeah. And we have other institutions that collaborate with us because we need uh, digital information from many other institutions. So they are uh, collaborating with us. Just to have you an idea, uh, this is a project of 2.4 million euros. And this was very competitive call because you see here, there were 139 proposals submitted to the European Commission and they only gave three projects. And one is this one. So it was very competitive call and we are very happy to have this. And we just finished uh, last month uh, this project. So we are doing many things. This is the, the, the thing you, you see before. So basically we have a lot of digital information. We have to relate all this information with ontologies, semantic web, Norway graphs. And then we have to show this technology to the people through a web-based application, an exploratory search engine is what, what we say. But also it's not only all the digital information, but we go to navigate inside the structure of the um, fabric in order to uh, show people also the intangible heritage, which is how these fabrics were, uh, were, were done, okay? So these are some of the, of the results of, uh, of the project. So first we have the Steel Heritage Thesaurus. So this is about vocabulary. So we have rescued a lot of terms. Um, there were people from, um, in our project that were doing this task of relating terms and covering terms and trying to match them between different um, languages. Then we have also educational material. So Instituto Cervantes work with this educational material. They are using the results of the project to teach Spanish to their students. And this is why we're work. So this has a great impact. Then we have Alasil, which is the exploratory search engine, where we have this database of all the data that we have collected. So I have to say that it's not only a web page, it's an information that is semantically related. And in order to do that, we need artificial intelligence for images and text. And this has been done by our colleagues from uh, university in Germany. This is the, the imaging. And from, the, uh, from Slovenia, they have worked in the, in the text. 